The Red Baron. A memorable encounter on April 30, 1917, Bully Bishop, Canada's top World War I flying ace, flew a combat patrol in the skies over France with his commander, Major Jack, Jack Scott. The Canadian pilots stopped four German fighter planes heading toward them and turned to attack. The lightning fight that followed Bishop Bishop squared off against the bright red German plane. Bishop managed to put some bullet holes in the plane in the red plane, but got several bullet holes in his own plane for his efforts. He quickly realized his foe was unlike and he never unlike any he'd ever faced. The German pilots broke off the fight by when four British planes arrived, but Bishop never forgot the battle. Bishop landed safely at his home airfield. It was a close shave, but a wonderful solo steering flight. The Canadian said later, despite his skill and combat exper- experiments, Bishop was lucky to have escaped unharmed. The pilot he tangled with that day was Germany's greatest ace, Manfred John von Richthofen. The famous Red Baron, the Young Baron, the Young Baron, Manfred Young, Young Rich, Rich von Richthofen was born in 1922 in a noble family in Parisia, the most powerful state in Germany. He had an older sister and two younger brothers. Manfred's family was minor nobles in Germany, so he has sometimes called a Baron. He was sometimes called a baron. The young man Fred loved to hunt on his family's land and, be- and became an expert shot. He also enjoyed horseback rice, horseback riding, and was skilled and was a skilled athlete. Manfred's father, Albrecht, had been an officer in, pre- in the Persian Calv- cavalry. He encouraged his sons to join the military. At the age of eleven, Manfred was sent to military school. He was only the age he was only an average student but had strong athletic abilities. After completing his schooling, he became a cavalry officer in nineteen eleven. With the start of World War One in August nineteen fourteen, Lieutenant Richthofen was sent to Eastern Front to fight with the Russian army. Soon afterward, he was transferred to the Western Front. When Germany faced the Allied forces, including Britain, France, and Canada, by early 1915, the world had become a stalemate. Soldiers lived in muddy, muddy trenches guarded by a bar- barbed wire and machine guns. This style of trench warfare which allowed for a little forward movement. Make, make cavalry units practice, practically useless. Richthofen's unit was stripped of his horses, and he became a foot, man, foot manager, becoming a World War I flyer. In 1915, war on, Richthofen grew tired of his filthy trenches. Being stuck there was not how he wanted to spend the war. Far above him, airplanes soared through the clean air and clouds. He wrote in his autobiography that he became tremendously excited whenever he saw an aviator. During the German flying, German flying service became his, his greatest wish. In May 15, Richthofen has escaped for pilot training. That then a pilot then a cam- combat pilot because the training period was shorter. Richthofen spent th- several months flying a- as an observer, but this type of flying didn't satisfy the hunter of him. In him, on October nineteen fifteen, Richthofen were sent were back to flight school to become a pilot. A- the young Baron must have knew- known. 
must have known the dangers of being a fighter pilot. The planes were fragile, and pilots did not have parachutes. Most new uh, combat pilots didn't survive past past their first two weeks. Like most of new flyers, Ristofan probably thought he could be bet by other odds. The airplane of the day were were flight from flimsy vehicles that mostly ha- vehicles made mostly of fabric and wood. Planes have been oh had to be lightweight in order to fly because the engines used in them were very, weren't very powerful. In addition, most of the planes at the time were big, big planes, planes that had two sets of wings. Two pairs of wings be- gave the plane increased sh- structural strength and reduced the fla- and reduced the weight that each wing had to support in the air. In the air during the first year of the war, both sides had experimented experimented with putting machine guns onto planes. The best place to po- to position of machine guns had a top the nose of the plane in front of the pilot. The problem with the this argument arrangement was that the plane's propeller was in the way and would get chewed by the bullets. The Germans solved the problem by Sertrangizing the guns with the rotation rotation of the propeller. With this system, the machine gun bullets passed harmlessly between the spinning propeller blades. The British soon developed a similar system of their own. The plane had now become a deadly weapon of both sides in the war. It was the weapon. It was a weapon of Ristofan, and it was hungering to use against Germany's enemies. In the late 1916, he got the opportunity he had been waiting for. Combat in the Clouds A cha- chance encounter of Oswald Bulka, one of the Germans' leading fires, opened new doors of Richthofen. At the time of their meeting, Block was putting together a new Jesta, yeah, Yatta of uh, or fighter squadron, squadron drawn of handpicked pilots. Bolik invi- invited Ristofen to join the group, and he jumped at the chance. Bulk wanted to make sure. Bulk wanted to make sure that his men always had the upper hand in the aerial combat. He made a list. Of eight di- dicta rules for engaging the enemy. One rule intrudes intru- pilots to drive out of the sun of their ad- adversaries so the enemy would no- not see them coming. Another told pilots to hold their fire until they were close to an enemy's plane. Richthofen had, had never, was never. For a flashy pilot, but he was displ- just slipped, following the Bolgaticas bo- to the letter. On September 17, 1916, he scored his first com- confirmed shootdown of an airline plane, airline, airline, allied plane. By October 16, he had donned four more. Allied aircraft with five victories under his belt, which Tuffin was now an ace. Ace near the end of near the end of October, Boak was killed when his plane crashed. Fall, crashed following a meteor, meteor collision with his own men. When Boakley, gone. Richthofen became the leading combat pilot in Germany, and his victories quickly added up. In January 1916, his score was down, down planes reached 16. In honor of, of his achievements, Richthofen was awarded Germany's highest military honor, a medal called the Blue Max. He also received com- command of, of his own Jasta with the promotion of to captain. 
Where's the friend that is Al Albatros big big plane plane painted a brilliant red to make it more visible in the sky. His men followed his lead and painted their planes with a variety of bright colors. The alleys began call began calling Wustafen's colorful group flying cruises. It was a deadly crisis. crisis. Under Wustafen's leadership, the Jasta racked up impressive victories. In April 1917, Wustafen's force shot down 89 planes in Britain's Loyal Flying Crops, RFC. Wustafen allowed Along claimed 22 victories, the RSFC lost 245 aircraft that month, which is remembered as which is remembered as bloody April. As his reputation grew, Ristofen's in, inspired nicknames such as Red Battle Fire and the Red Knight. The French called him Lydia Bull Ruff, Red Devil Oli Petit Roof, Little Red. The Red Baron nickname became popular after the war. In July, Rustafenser suffered a serious wound when a bullet grazed his skull during an artificial combat. During a one month's recovery, he returned to his home in Prussia. He and his brother Luther, who was also an ace and would survive the war, went hunting in the, fam in the family woods. Wurstefan had always been up for a hunt, whether on ground or in the air. However, though, he began to lose his red vest of ba for battle. The end of the Red Baron Returning from to the front of August, Wurstefan traded his Al Albertrus plane for a new Fokker triplane. The slew was highly man maneuverable. Fighter feared three sets of wings and, and be quickly became their aircraft with, with which he is a lo most often remembered. Despite hatches, headaches from his incompletely hailed wound and his wrong state for the for the war, Rustafan continued to plague the alleys. On, on April 20, 1918, he scored his 18th victory. It will be his last. The next day, while engaging the combat above Allied lines, Rustafen was struck by a single bullet that pierced, pierced his heart. He managed to land safely, but was pulled, pulled from his plane by Australian soldiers. According to one of the soldiers, the Baron of Fa uttered one final word in German. Caput then for he died moments later. Allied pilots gave Richtofen a firm funeral with full military honors at the French cemetery. A rough place on his red coffin read Char Gallant and Worthy Foe. Richtofen's body was transferred to Germany after the war. A controversy arose over who fired the bullet and struck Richtofen. Canadians ins insisted it was one of their own pilots, Captain Arthur Brown. However, many historians be believe the fall fatal bullet came from the Australian gunner on the ground. With 1880 f confirmed victories, Rustafen was the greatest ace on World War I. In later times, people would refer other commanding figures on the air war. The French remembered Reen Funk with 75 victories, and Canadians honored Billy Bishop with 22. Americans had a special place in the hearts of Eddie Rickenbacker, who shot down the 86 enemy planes in just the final in, the, in just the final eight months of the war. Even so, it discussed. In discussions of World War I aerial combat, the first name that comes to most people's minds is Man Manfred von Richthofen, the legendary Red Baron.